17, 2018, Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mayor. Effective communication requires more than an exchange of information. When done right, communication fosters understanding, strengthens relationships, Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. City Clerk. We have three people this evening. First on the list is Dulcie Johnson. Dulcie, if you could come on up. <clears throat> and Dulcie, can you give me your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. <coughs> okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor Vandersteen, <coughs> City Clerk Richards, City Administrator Hofland, City Attorney Adams, Aldermen, and citizens. I join the men and women who spoke at the Plan Commission hearing in asking <coughs> that you do not endorse destroying a forest to create a golf course. I question the need for a golf course, and I am concerned about the environmental impacts. I have not researched those issues, but they have been well documented by others who have done the research and have the backgrounds and degrees to support their conclusions. I'm also concerned about the implications for the people whose lives will be disrupted by such a development. When issues arise, these people will have no recourse. The town will be helpless because the land is not in the town. City council members will likely not care because the people who are affected are not their constituents. The annexation will remove the land from the jurisdiction of those whose lives will be most changed because of it. It was interesting to learn that Kohler bought two houses in the town to accomplish this annexation. The attorney for the town, however, stated that the annexation is not contiguous and described it as a balloon on a string. The leader of the Sheboygan Economic Development Corporation talked about the $87,000 in taxes that the city could re would receive, which could be used for road repairs. I asked Public Works Director Dave Beeble what it costs to repair a mile of roads. The 2017 capital improvements budget includes $2.3 million for five and a half miles of street repairs, making the cost about $420,000 per mile. Obviously, $87,000 would not have much impact on the street repair budget. I attended one of the Kohler sponsored input sessions at the Three Sheeps Brewery. The first listing station had a poster listing economic impacts. It cited benefits to the city, including $250,000 in room tax revenue. I challenged that because, as you know, Kohler does not contribute to the county's room tax. Also, as you know, Kohler is building another hotel in Woodlake. Interestingly, the $250,000 room tax benefit for the city has now been reduced to $88,000. How was that adjustment arrived at? And this prompts me to, ask other, to question other assertions, like the projection of another 23,000 rounds of golf per year. How was that figure arrived at? How many rounds of golf are currently played? Do we know that there will be more tourism in Sheboygan because the golf course is located in the city rather than in the town, as the manager of Blue Harbor asserted? Will the projected sales and income tax figures be different if the land is in the city? How do we know that 68 of the 95 full-time construction jobs will be filled by city residents? How do we know that 124 of the projected 227 full-time equivalent jobs will be filled by city residents? 
At another listening station, a Kohler employee explained that one of the reasons for the annexation was for better fire protection. I'm not a golfer, and I do not follow the sport, and was not aware that fires on golf courses are a big concern. At the plan commission hearing, however, a town firefighter said he thought the concern was for medical emergencies. He stated that the town's response time is four minutes, which meets the NFPA standard. He also talked about the staffing of the city's fire station on the far south side. If the annexation is approved, the fire department will have another reason to ask for more firefighters, and this could be another possible use of the additional taxes of $87,000. It would pay for one more firefighter. The average wages and benefits in 2016 of the four most recently hired firefighters was $86,609. I've heard of the seven wonders of the world, but I was astounded to hear a Kohler employee say that Sheboygan will be one of the 10 most visited places in the world for golfers if Kohler builds this golf course. Personally, I think the hype is getting a little much. Deny this annexation and vote to protect our environment. Vote against destroying a deforest and a beautiful natural piece of land for a golf course that if actually needed could be built somewhere else. The damage to the scenic area will be unreversible and those who will be most directly impacted by the development will have no voice or recourse. It has been argued that approval of the annexation does not mean approval of the golf course, but we all know that it amounts to a tacit vote to do just that. Thank you. Thank you, Delcy. Next on the list is Terrence Doyle. Terrence, if you could come on up. Terrence, if I could have your home address, please. Um, 35 Broadway. Okay, and if you want to put your mic up oh, sir. All right. just a little bit so people can hear you. A little and better. you will have five minutes, sir. Pardon? And you will have five minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, look at that. Not a big enough ledge on there, I guess. All right, I'm Terrence Doyle. I'm following up on the uh, letter I wrote to the Common Council, City of Sheboygan. I'm referring to the water main project uh, on uh, Broadway Avenue uh, in the basic uh, of the assessment process. I'm asking the Common Council to review its decision on how the assessments are applied to this water lateral project and the future projects. Uh, <clears throat> any method should have a committee uh, review the applicable laws that are available to make the decision on how the assessments are applied. We discussed this a little bit a month ago and asked uh, how, what can be done. I copied, I sent a letter, I copied all the state laws and the uh, City Ordinance. The City of Sheboygan Finance Department gave me the statutes of assessments. Uh, Wisconsin Statute 66.0703, special assessments generally is what they use to apply the assessments. Uh, under, that, under that state statute, assessment represents an exercise of police powers. The assessment shall be upon a reasonable basis as determined by the governing body. <coughs> Excuse me, I believe that's you, the governing body of the City of Sheboygan and you can determine how the assessment is applied. It, it does not uh, say exactly how it's applied. You have that choice. Under the, uh, under the same statute, 66.0703, uh, sub 14, uniformity, <coughs> uniformity requires the assessment to be fairly and equitably apportioned among property owners in comparable positions. The municipality must use a method of assessment that produces a uniform and equal value for all affected properties. This is not on your uh, letters, but it's a footnote I put on here. As assessed, my property is devalued by the, the present assessment process. Why is it devalued? Because I am also responsible for maintenance of that 30 feet of water lateral. That means I have a, if I were to sell my property, I have to inform, I have a possible maintenance cost based on footage more than anybody else, more than the other, anybody else in my uh, street or my neighborhood. 
There's a few houses that are the same, but there's a, it's not the same across the board. It is uh, unreasonable to use the same method of an assessed group of property owners when it results in an entirely disproportionate result that could easily be remedied by using a different method to assess one group of the property owners by a different method from that used to assess if the results are entirely disproportionate. Uh, I've got a footnote on this one also, and this is not, not included. I uh, just received this information this week. The short side of the street, which, uh, you know, I'm not on the short side. I'm on the long side, but I'm on the short side. The short side of the street, uh, I'm kind of standing up there on behalf of the short side. They're actually being charged $112 per foot for the short side for the same pipe. I'm being charged $93 a foot for the long side of the street. So how is that fair? That's not fair. For the water lateral pipe, it's right here from the city, or from the Troy Water Department. Now, so again, we're back to what's fair, what's not fair. It's not uniform. Uh, that uniform, uh, let's see, moving on to next part here. The, the, the use of ordinance 122-98, which is a city ordinance, it says water, it's under the highlight of water main extensions. Well, it does not apply for two reasons. It's not a water main extension, which is for subdivisions. We've discussed that in the past. Uh, two, it should, if it was to be used, it should refer to Wisconsin State Statute 66.0701, Special Assessments by Local Ordinance. And that's not what's being applied. So uh, I've had this discussion. Uh, I did have a, a meeting with the city attorney, and we discussed this. My question about the uh, water main extension heading, and he said, well, we'll just rewrite the law. Well, that's why I'm here. I want to change the perspective of the law a little bit. You know, uh, it's, not, it's not that I'm changing it for my own benefit. I have multiple properties, and this is the only one I'm on the long side of the street. I want to check them all out, so I'm kind of defeating my own purpose here, but I'm trying to create what is fair. And what is fair to me is that you have a water curb stop, one curb stop per house, and you know, in, this, in this line we have 65 curb stops being, or properties being serviced. All right, so with that 65 properties being serviced, and you count each one as an individual, you take the total cost of the uh, whole project and divide it by the 65, the total cost of the billables, 128,000 divided by 65, it comes out to an average of $1,969. Excuse me, Terrence, your time is up. Pardon? Your time is up. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. sorry. Well, that's thank pretty, you. pretty quick. It's hard to, hard to get that done fast. Okay. Thank you. Um, always available for more questions. I uh, ask you to uh, please consider all your options. Because the, you have the power to change it any way you want. Thank you, Terrence. Uh, last on our list is Roger Miller. Is Roger here? <coughs> Roger, can I have your home address, please? My, I reside at 202 Pioneer Road in the town of Wilson, and I'm that town's plan commission chairman. Okay, you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm going to speak very briefly on your agenda item 4.1 uh, tonight, which is Kohler Company's petition to annex into the city uh, their 247-acre parcel just north of the state park along with a large portion of the state park and a mile-long narrow connecting strip. While you're not scheduled to decide on this today, I understand it'll be on your June 19th agenda. Tonight, I'm just going to pose several, actually three fundamental questions that I think deserve your consideration. The first is, the reason that the city has said annexation is needed is to provide city services to this land claiming that the city's in a better position to do that than the town, when in fact town sanitary sewers already surround the north and west sides of Kohler's land, the lake is to the east, the state park is to the south. So there's not even any route left that's available to the city along the mile of distance from the city's closest sewer, and there is no city master plan to accomplish this. In contrast, there are four town sanitary manholes right along the north boundary of Kohler's property. If it's not sewer, is it then water supply? 
Kohler's applications to the Corps of Engineers and DNR for some wetland filling describe the high capacity wells that they'll use for golf course irrigation and they've done test wells to verify that. So why, oh, and likewise, there is not a feasible route to bring city water to this parcel. And Kohler Company is not saying that they want or need it. So why then is city annexation needed to provide services? We've, other people have already spoken in the past to fire, <coughs> emergency services, law enforcement, and first responders. Second question to ask yourself. At the recent plan commission's public hearing of the 30 public inputs, there were 10 speaking in favor of the golf course, all repeating the same thing, countywide economic benefits. Now, what does that have to do with annexation? Do golfers at Whistling Straits know or care they're in the town of Mosul? Is that less popular than Black Wolf Run in the village of Kohler? Or is it tax revenue that the city is after, which is estimated by Kohler to be less than $17,000 a year? Now subtract whatever annualized expense to provide municipal utilities for which there's no practical route. With no city services provided, what even warrants city tax revenue when the town is already providing all of the services that are needed? Third point. Present zoning of the land that Kohler proposes to get annexed is park and open space, consistent with both the town's and the city's master's plan. Why then is Kohler proposing that their land and a large portion of the state park be zoned high density residential, SR5? No housing is proposed on Kohler's land, and no housing is going to be developed on the parkland. In fact, not a single house is proposed on any of the land cited in the annexation petition. So ask yourselves, why zone to high density residential SR5 when no housing is proposed? <clears throat> that zoning and annexation is all that you'll be voting on when the time comes. You will not be voting on a golf course. That's not part of your, your petition. The town would appreciate if you'd allow us equal presentation time to COLA Company at your June 19th meeting to provide information that's pertinent to, to this annexation issue. I'm sensitive to the financial pressures the city faces because in my day job, I'm presently working on at least half a dozen jobs right within the city limits and I'm accustomed to working with city staff and engineering on providing economic workable solutions. I also have decades of experience in working with many other local governments. And from that, I know and understand that nothing is more expensive or costly than making poorly informed decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. That's it for this evening. Thank you very much. Next, we'll move on to a presentation, uh, a 2016 Tourism Zone Update by Amy Wilson from Visit Sheboygan, Inc., uh, their president. Amy? Good evening. Um, as most of you know, we usually give an annual update about this time of year, um, and it's going to reflect on the state of tourism for the state, the county, and our Sheboygan area tourism zone, and we usually receive all of that data back in May for the prior year. So that's why we're doing it in June. There's been some changes in tourism in the, in the last year, so I'm just going to walk you through those um, so you're up to date on that, and then we'll run through this. Could you advance a slide, please? So uh, Sheboygan tourism was embedded as a department of the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce in June 1st, 2010, and it operated as a department of the chamber um, until this year, um, at which time in 2015 and 16, there were changes made to the Wisconsin State Room Tax Law, which required that municipalities no longer spend money directly, that they contract with the tourism entity, and that any adjacent counties or any adjacent municipalities collecting room tax form a room tax zone. And the Sheboygan area formed a room tax zone with the town of Wilson and the town of Sheboygan. That zone is governed by a new room tax commission 
um, which then has to contract with the tourism entity to provide marketing <coughs> services. And that is essentially how Visit Sheboygan was formed, pulled out of the chamber as a department and became its own nonprofit to be governed under the room tax zone, under the new state laws. Um, so basically from the beginning of this year through April 1st, we went through that transition and on April 1st, 2017, Visit Sheboygan began operating as its own nonprofit entity. You can flip slides, please. So the positions on the Sheboygan Area Room Tax Commission are also governed by Wisconsin State Statute. Um, and each city, depending on their level of contribution to the room tax, earns representatives. And then depending on the level of total budget, uh, it tells you how many hoteliers you need represented on that board. So our room tax commission consists of our chairperson, Chad Pelashek from the city of Sheboygan, our own Mayor Vandersteen, who is the vice chair, our secretary and treasurer, who is Dan Olson from the town of Sheboygan, um, um, our, one of our commission members, Dan Rostelin from the town of Wilson, Cameron Bopp from Pride Hospitality, and David Sanderson from Blue Harbor Resort. And Sue, so we can please advance the slide. Um, you'll see on the next slide the mission of Visit Sheboygan, no different than it was before, to be an economic, a driver of economic growth, engaging with our partners to enhance the visitor experience while seeking new opportunities for sites, attractions, and hospitality businesses that improve the quality of life for residents and visitors. And the next slide shows our vision, um, which markets the Sheboygan area as a Great Lake getaway with exhilarating adventures on the water and invigorating recreation on land, surrounded by an eclectic mix of arts, entertainment, and Epicurean mastery, all at an affordable price. Um, so the next slide will tell us what we're about to review for the economic impact. And as I said, we'll go through the Wisconsin state tourism numbers, the county tourism economics, and then for our zone. And next slide, please, Sue. And you can just keep advancing as I go down these numbers. <laughs> um, so in 2016 for Wisconsin, visits grew by 3.3%, and room demand was up 2.3%. And this is the first time that across the state we've topped selling over 17 million hotel rooms. The average daily rate increased by 3.1%, and overall room revenue increased by 5.4%. On the next slide, you'll see that leisure travel spending was 10.8 billion or 88% of all visitors spending. Um, the overnight market, those who stay in hotel rooms, was 66% of all visitors spending at about $8.2 billion. And day visits brought in about 4.1 billion. More than 107 million people visited the state, spending over $12 billion. Now, if we break down that spending, about $2.7 billion was spent on lodging, and that's an increase of 5.8%. $3.2 billion was spent on food and beverage, which was up 4.8%. $2.5 billion was spent on retail, which is up 2.4%. And 4.2% of the spending was spent on recreation at over $1.6 billion, which is actually the number we pay attention to most in our efforts as a recreational destination. On the next slide, you'll see the um, Sheboygan County seven-year visitor spending trend. It begins at 2010, as you remember, that's coming out of the recession. And every year visited, visitor spending since then has increased up until our record-breaking year this year, or last year, 2016. Between 2010 and 2016, visitor spending in our county increased more than $54 million. To now it's today over 223 million. On the next slide, you'll see um, the municipalities that have um, room tax ordinances in place. We're the only zone in the county. Um, the others run independent tourism op uh, offices under tourism entities. Our zone captures about 42% of the visitor spending. Um, and then you'll see Kohler, of course, is very much right next to us, followed by Elkhart Lake, Plymouth, and Sheboygan Falls. <coughs> On the next slide, you'll see the Sheboygan, actually this is the Sheboygan area tourism zone room tax estimate, estimates over the um, 
the years from 2010 to 2016. The top line, the blue line, shows you the numbers that come into our budget. That's what the tourism office spends to promote the area. And the bottom line is what goes into the general funds for the city. Um, now, of course, these numbers do not include Blue Harbor's room tax because those are designated right now to pay off the, the conference center, the bonds for the conference center, which will mature in November of 2018. And then that room tax will also come into this process, split 70-30. <coughs> On the next slide, you'll see the Sheboygan area tourism zone breakdown. And these do not also include Blue Harbor's room tax, but how our budget is broken down and the contributors of it in our zone and pretty much the amounts. Right now, the city of Sheboygan um, captures about 90% of the room tax collected in the zone. On the next slide, you'll see the um, room tax contributions to tourism. This is only the 70%, so this is what our budget is. And you'll see that, follow, that, that in 2017, and that's our budget for this year, we always budget downward a little bit so that we can remain conservative and we don't have to worry about things outside of our control, possibly even a hotel burning down, whether that impedes travel, anything can happen that we don't control, so we tend to budget conservatively. So you'll see the 2017 budget at the bottom, and as you'll see, 2015, um, if you go back the two years before that, the over um, 546, or what is it, 546,000 was the total room tax for our record-breaking PGA year. And then, mostly due to return visits from that record-breaking year, we also broke a record again in 2016, which we did not expect. And now, we'll look at how Sheboygan stands in terms of the Lakeshore visitor spending. And we can go to the next slide, Sue. So right here, you'll see a chart of the uh, top nine counties along the Lakeshore. Actually, these are the nine counties along the Lakeshore. You'll see Sheboygan is positioned at number five, which actually makes sense if you consider Milwaukee's huge metropolis airport um, and down on the southern end of the state. Then you have Brown County with the Packers up at the northern end, and of course, Door County, which is a countywide resort with over 100,000 room nights to sell every night. Um, Sheboygan County has 1,886 rooms to sell every night. So our standing isn't too bad. However, when we look at Racine County, um, we do think there's some underreporting going on there. Now, remember that Sheboygan County, of course, is just about in the middle of the lakeshore, um, and it's also along the I-43 corridor, which carries about one-third of the state's total tourism spending. So we're sitting right in the sweet spot. On the next slide, You'll see some of the reasons that we believe there's some underreporting going on. The State Department of Tourism contracts with a third party research organization to do its tourism research and market reports every year. And this is where we get the data that we compare to our data and then start to run the numbers. Um, after a few years of watching what we believe was underreporting compared to our record breaking room tax numbers, um, we actually had a phone conversation with that company to find out the variables they use. A few things we found out um, that won't necessarily be fixed since they do 72 counties, so they have to somehow smooth this. Um, but our, one, of the thing, one of the major things is that our revenues in our county are privately owned, so they do not publicly report to the Star Report, which is a nationwide reporting system that franchise hotels report their revenues to. And with good reason, they don't. They're privately owned. They're in major competition with resorts across the state. They don't necessarily want to let out those numbers. So we know that their revenues are only being estimated by our third-party research company. Um, and also, one of the variables they use is the visitor gas receipts determined by zip code. Obviously, if you look at out-of-state zip codes in Sheboygan County, they're more than likely going to be business travelers, maybe leisure travelers, not necessarily business commuters, but people who are here for long-term stays with their business. And we do receive room tax dollars from them. Um, but if you look at it in Racine County, so close to the state line, um, some of those Illinois receipts could just be passing through or coming in for a day trip. They're gonna have a lot higher percentage of out-of-state gas receipts than we do. Um, also, the industry employment wages and sales based are, are based on the U.S. Census Bureau information. 
And those are based on population. Racine County has a higher population than we do. We're at about 115,000. They're at about 195,000. So anything that we base on population is gonna give them a higher number. And that will also account for the visitor sales tax receipts based on population percentages. Um, they do believe that there's a certain percentage of every population that is visitors. However, we know that that fluctuates, especially if we look at Door County. <laughs> um, so what we believe then um, to be the difference, and, and here's the, the real teller. If you look at the number of hotel rooms in the little chart at the bottom, as I said, we have just under 1,900 hotel rooms. Racine County has about 1,300 hotel rooms to sell every night. Our visitor spending is at a, just over 223 million. Theirs is 229 million. Um, but then if you look at the equivalent full-time jobs in our industry, we employ just over 3,500 people in the county. Racine County employs just over 4,000. So if we compare that to the number of hotel rooms, either we're really, really good at efficiency or there are some errors in the reporting. Um, looking at the numbers as we ran them through the spreadsheets and looked at the equations in our office and with our board and our commission, we do believe that we're being underreported by about as much as $100 million a year in visitor spending especially when we consider, and that's across the county. Now you have to consider too that the American Club, of course, is the Midwest's only Forbes five-star resort. Um, so they're probably incredibly underreported. If we go to the next slide, um, we do have some expansion opportunities coming up in tourism to e even boost the industry even more in our area. And to present those, I'm going to introduce um, Cameron Bopp, who is the general manager of the Holiday Inn Express, also on the Tourism Commission, and he oversees the Harbor Winds and the America Inns for Pride Hospitality. And Chad Peleshek, whose title I realized I forgot to put on this slide, but he has so many they wouldn't fit. Um, but he, <laughs> he is also the chairman of the Room Tax Commission. Thanks, Amy. Our vision and mission is driven by a destination of unique and niche attractions. Uh, Kohler's already proven that they produce with a staggering nine previous golf tournaments and the largest is yet to come. Uh, 2015 PGA Championship had an economic impact of well over $100 million. The impact is still tallying um, almost two years later. How can that be? These events draw tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, visitors that bring an immediate economic impact during that seven day event. What the public doesn't realize and doesn't see is the dozens of staff that were here months before and months after the actual event. We're talking about the design and construction of buildings, security teams installing gates, barricades and protocols, and also um, can't forget the food, beverage, and gift shop set up. Of the 200,000 people attending the 2015, 2015 PGA Championship, how many dreamed of relocating here to start their family, develop their business, or even uh, come in vacation annually? You see, the economic impact of a multinational event is always more than what we see. As a county, we're extremely fortunate to have the intellect of Chad and Amy governing our tourism expansion. <coughs> Under their leadership, the hotel room tax has grown almost a quarter million dollars just the last seven years. Their constant pursuit of tourism trends and execution through media and public relations have put our county in a real good, in a very good place to capitalize on this opportunity in a new golf destination. Chad's now going to take over and share how we can prepare to foster our future growth through an expansion in our visitor center. Chad. Thank you. If you can go to the next slide. So as we know, we're embarking on the final destination of getting the National Marine Sanctuary designation. We're hoping that um, that could come as early as this fall. Um, this has been about a three-year process, so we're excited to see what's going to come as a result of that. Um, we believe that that uh, preliminary numbers, based on what's been uh, provided to us by a similar sanctuary in Alpena, Michigan, which is the only other Great Lakes sanctuary site. 
um, and looking at their tourism impact is going to have significant increases in uh, tourism numbers here in our local economy. So with that, we've, we're proposing as we move, as Amy mentioned earlier, the uh, Blue Harbor room tax is going to be paid off. A Blue Harbor Convention Center is bonds are going to be paid off in November of 18, 2018. So in 2019, we would see additional increment coming into the tourism uh, for tourism promotion and development based on uh, the room tax collected by Blue Harbor. So what do we see ourselves doing with this? Um, one of the first things we'd like to do is plant ourselves in our own visit center, visitor center, uh, potentially on South Pier, although we're looking at a number of sites. Um, this visitor center would include a number of different uh, exhibits. So there could be some shipwreck exhibits, um, the Science on the Sphere exhibit that had been uh, put into Spaceport. Unfortunately, with the news we heard, last week about the closure of Spaceport and the Science on the Sphere exhibit is directly related to the sanctuary. Um, that exhibit could come back and be part of a uh, visitor experience. Uh, interactive robotic exhibits stimulating ROVs, which are remote operated vehicles, shipwreck boat tours, and then uh, really dividing into a new niche that we have never been involved with, in, which is group tours. So the idea would be to get more bus tours charter bus tours into this market to experience what we have here. Um, so it's preliminary as to where we see ourselves going, but we really feel that um, there's some markets that are untapped that we can expand into as we move forward and um, really showcase Sheboygan <coughs> from a tourism standpoint with the development of a new visitor center in the near future. So um, that's kind of where we're at. If there's any questions, the three of us would be happy to answer them. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, I thank you very much for your presentation tonight. Next, we'll move on to mayor's announcements. First of all, I'd like to ask Tim Caker to come forward. After 42 years in exec as the executive director of Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Sheboygan County, Tim Caker has retired as of last week. Over his tenure, Tim brought a real passion to his role of providing adult mentors to children who needed some acceptance and guidance in their life. When Tim began his time at the agency in 1975, mentors were matched with just over 100 children, and it would still be two years before Big Sisters International and Big Brothers Association would merge, forming Big Brothers and Big Sisters of America. Caker will leave the agency in a strong position. In the past year, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Sheboygan County served 433 children. Over the past two years, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Sheboygan County increased the number of matches by 14% and maintained a match retention rate of 92% on the traditional community-based matches and 79% for the school-based uh, program known as Lunch Buddies. It has been good to see the strong partnership that the organization has developed with the Sheboygan Police Department and the Sheboygan Fire Department. Both chiefs and many of their officers are mentoring children in the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program. I personally had the opportunity to serve on this board at a very exciting time when the school-based Lunch Buddy program was developed. At that time, this new program allowed the, the program to see about a 30 to 35 percent growth in the matches administered by Tim and his staff. Last month, Big Brothers and Big Sisters National Leadership Council recognized Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Sheboygan County with a National Quality Award for team leadership and quality community programming for the third straight year. Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Sheboygan County is the only chapter in Wisconsin to have been recognized with this award for three consecutive years and one uh, of less than 40 nationwide. I hope you'll join me in thanking Tim for developing an effective agency that works to mentor children at risk. The prevention that's provided to these students leads to many positive outcomes and brighter futures for the mentored children. 
His efforts together with the volunteers that are the lifeblood of the program have made Sheboygan a stronger community. Tim, on behalf of the city of Sheboygan, I say thank you for a job well done and wish you all the best in your retirement. And uh, as a small gesture of appreciation, I'd like to present you with the key to the city of Sheboygan. What a strange trip it's been. <laughs> uh, I'm deeply honored by this. Uh, there are a lot of people, even sitting in this room, that uh, have given much to uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters, including our police chief and our fire chief. And uh, Roman here is on our board of directors. Mike is a former board member. Jim Bourne is a former uh, board president. Sue once worked for us. Chuck is uh, currently a, a lunch buddy. Uh, I feel like I'm at home. <laughs> But thank you very much, it's, it's an honor. Next, I'd like to call up Barb Themy. Barb Themy served as the city of Sheboygan from October 11th of 1999 through June 2nd of 2017 as the administrative assistant for the wastewater treatment facility. In her early years uh, with the city, Barb also helped out at the Maywood Environmental Park. Barb was an extremely dedicated professional who was always friendly and made everyone who worked at or visited the facility feel welcome. Barb was the key to helping the facility operate smoothly to meet its permit required reports in a timely fashion. This was especially important in the transition period between retiring and new management. Barb was an excellent employee and a tremendous asset to the city of Sheboygan. She worked independently and was very self-motivated. Over the last several years, Barb continued to work with the consultants on, and the subcontractors on the hauling, receiving, and billing software as a part of the wastewater treatments facility $9 million dewatering and drying project. Barb's continued troubleshooting and suggestions were key to the city receiving a billing system that served the facility's needs. Barb Thieme's contributions and knowledge were invaluable to the Sheboygan Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility and to the city of Sheboygan. Barb was the go-to person for the wastewater treatment staff for uh, daily HR and purchasing questions. She was also very detailed and accurate with all of her work. Barb's work never had to be questioned or repeated. Barb will definitely be missed by the city and the wastewater treatment facility staff. Barb, I'd like to present you with a certificate of appreciation from the city of Sheboygan for your 17 and a half years of dedicated service as employee of the wastewater treatment plant from October 11th of 1999 through June 2nd of 2017. And congratulations on your retirement. Next, I'd like to call David Adams forward. David Adams retired on June 2nd of 2017 after 26 and a half years of service as a Sheboygan police officer. Dave was born in Sheboygan at St. Nick's and graduated from South High and earned a bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. While at UWM, he met his wife, Marcia, who followed, and he followed her back to Sheboygan after graduation. He tired of working as a Wisconsin Correctional Service in uh, Milwaukee and therefore applied for a job as a Sheboygan police officer. Dave thought when he applied that it would be a temporary job till he found something he really wanted to do. But after making it through the hiring process and being sworn in as an officer in the police department on January 4th of 1991, he soon found that he had discovered his true calling. Dave spent the first 12 years of his career on the second and third shifts until moving to the day shift in 2003. During his time with the department, Dave's been involved in many important aspects of the Sheboygan Police Department outside of his duties as a patrol officer. He served for over 10 years on the emergency response team and was also selected as a department canine officer. 
Dave and his partner, Darrow, served together from 1994 to 99. They spent many long hours together on the road as well at home. Sadly, Darrow passed away and there are many great memories of the two partners. One interesting story regarding Dave and his partner, Darrow, occurred on the 4th of July in 1996. The city was celebrating the traditional 4th of July holiday and as many know, the 4th of July celebration was a little bit different in the 90s compared to today's family friendly environment. Around 9 o'clock, Dave and his partner were alerted that two officers on the beach near DeLand Park were attempting to make an arrest. An angry crowd of intoxicated individuals sounded, surrounded the two officers, calling them to call for assistance. The crowd was throwing sand and objects at the officers as they attempted to maintain control the two individuals who had created a, a disturbance. Officer Adams reacted by carrying his canine partner through the sand and crowd to the location of the two officers in order to protect them. His appearance um, along with his partner quickly changed the attitude of the angry crowd and the officers were able to escort the subjects peacefully to the awaiting car. It's unknown if the crowd was calmed by the presence of Dave or his canine partner, but he likes to believe it was him. <laughs> Dave was also actively involved in providing school and community presentations with his partner, as well as assisting area school districts, correction facilities with canine searches. He was recognized with numerous times for his professionalism and willingness to assist. <coughs> Within the department, David has participated in the hiring process by being actively involved in the assessment center, assisting in court services, presenting at the Citizens Academy and the Chamber of Commerce Criminal Justice Day. He also provided intruder alert training and workforce safety and, secu and security to public and private organizations. David's outgoing personality and knowledge was always appreciated by the attendees. David also has been recognized for the times uh, at the apartment for achievements over his career. One such action occurred in November of 1993 where David was involved in rescuing a male from a swampy area of the Pigeon River on the Weiss property. A male had become lost during a critically cold night and a caller contacted the police stating they could hear a man yelling for help from the swamp. The caller did not know the exact location and due to the high winds. David also, uh, along with other officers, made their way to the swamp at 3.30 in the morning and found the man who would have succumbed to the bitter cold if not found. The man received medical care and survived. Over the past year, Dave played an integral role in the transition to a new radio system by learning how to program and update the software on the new radios. Dave's assistance with the programming of the radios helped ensure that the transition was smooth. Dave has served the city of Sheboygan and its residents for 26 years. He provided the service of expe that's expected of a police officer, putting himself at risk at times, but mainly by helping to solve problems, building positive relationships in the community. His personality, humor, knowledge, and willingness to serve are appreciated by all. Dave now plans to enjoy his retirement by spending time with his wife, Marcia, and their three children. Dave, I'm very... Uh, Pleased to present you with a certificate of uh, appreciation for 26 years of dedicated service to the city of Sheboygan from January 4th of 1991 through June 2nd of 2017. Congratulations. On Friday, May 19th, the city of Sheboygan and Esslingen celebrated their 50th anniversary as sister cities at a banquet in Esslingen, Germany. A delegation of 34 persons from Sheboygan traveled to Germany with uh, Chief Mike Romus and myself to participate in this event. I included uh, this, included in this delegation were members of the Mayor's International Committee, people to people, and residents of the Sheboygan area. Since January 16th of 1967, when the City of Sheboygan Common Council recognized and endorsed the Sister City Partnership with Esslingen, I'm the ninth mayor to preserve and participate in this partnership with our colleagues in Esslingen City Government. During this time, many young students have enjoyed and learned from the visits to both of our cities. The exchange students have made lifelong friendships and their families have adopted the student and family of their other partners. At the banquet, speeches and gifts were exchanged by the mayors 
On behalf of Sheboygan, I presented a large engraved vase to Esslingen, and Lord Mayor Zeger presented me with this picture that's on the wall. It's, uh, it's an ad that appeared in the Sheboygan Press 50 years ago when the, uh, the partnership began. We also participated uh, soon after we arrived and uh, planted a ceremonial uh, sugar maple tree in Merkel Park in Esslingen. The sugar maple, of course, is the state tree of Wisconsin. During the past 50 years, many individuals had the privilege and responsibility of keeping this relationship strong and meaningful. I extend a special thanks to the past city councils and the present one, the Mayor's International Committee, the former mayors, people to people, the youth chaperones, the city staff, and local families who participate in the student exchanges all have helped to nurture and strengthen this very special relationship with our friends of Esslingen. We were able to reach this milestone and celebrate this anniversary because of all those efforts over the last 50 years. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to a hearing. Item 2.1 is hearing number three of 1718 relating to amending the city's official zoning map and to change the use district classification of the property located at 2010 South 19th Street, parcels 143870 and 1413880 from class UI urban industrial to class NR6 neighborhood residential. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Yes, sir. Please give us your name and address. Uh, good evening. My name is Brian Cook, C-O-O-K-E. Uh, my business address is 4902 North Biltmore Lane, Madison, Wisconsin, 53718. Uh, here on uh, behalf of the applicant to propose uh, approval for the rezone of three parcels that constitute Alliant Energy substation at 20 to South 19th Street on the west side of the intersection with U Union Avenue. Uh, the substation occupies primarily the northerly parcel. We want to rebuild the substation as a life cycle replacement. Uh, and to do so, we want to uh, add a new uh, switch gear enclosure that will kind of encroach into the uh, southerly two lots. So in order to accomplish that through the conditional use permitting process, we need to rezone the three parcels so they're uh, congruent and then go through the uh, land division approval process. All right, thank you very much for those comments. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? You may step down. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll proceed to the consent agenda. Items 3.2 through 3.17 um, are before us. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I make a motion to accept and file all, RO, all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Motion passes. Item 4.1 is RO number 41 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred RO number 32A of 1718 by the City Clerk for an application from Reinhardt Attorneys at Law at the request of the Kohler Company in closing the annexation petition for lands in the vicinity of Stahl Road, County Trunk KK and 12th Street. County Trunk V in the town of Wilson. It recommends approval and re of the report of officer. Alderperson Bellinger. I would move to accept and file. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, that item is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Mary, Mary Lynn. Um, just to uh, verify that um, 
uh, we are not uh, voting on the annexation itself, but merely uh, on the uh, application and that it will be filed. That's correct, and that uh, the um, ordinance has to be drawn, and that would be uh, uh, possibly on our next agenda. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 4.2 is RO number 42 of 1718 by the Director of Planning and Development submitting a request for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory to dock a 55-foot NOAA research vessel at South Pier from June 5th through June 23rd of 2017 and waiving any docking fees. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend. Second. I have a motion to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, pre please proceed. Make a, motion, make a motion to approve. Well, we want some explanation of uh, suspension. Why are we suspending? Uh, we're, we're suspending the uh, docking, we're waiving the docking fees um, because what's going to happen is the NOAA is going to dock and have some community involvement um, while they're doing some ozone testing. Um, off off the shore of Sheboygan. Why are we suspending now? I mean, I know that's to, what they're doing, but They're supposed to be here tomorrow. Okay. Chad, did you want to add anything to that? If they're not here already, they will be here tomorrow, and by the time the council would take action on it, they would be all done because the next council meeting is until the 19th, so they'd have four more days after that. So that's the reason for the suspension is that they're coming into port as we speak. Under further discussion, Alderperson Boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, maybe Chad could answer this for me. Uh, if we had a private 55 boat coming into Sheboygan and they were going to be docking there from June 5th to June 23rd, approximately what would their rental be? <clears throat> Um, that's a good question. Uh, it's handled by the uh, marina um, under the large yacht facility. I would say somewhere probably in the range of 2,500 bucks. For that period of time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alder Person Donahue. Thank you. And uh, just in reviewing the, uh, the uh, resolution, it is clear that the city will reap considerable benefit from this particular proposal. And so even though we are waiving the fee, I think the information that we will get, uh, particularly since we're always concerned about being labeled one of the dirtiest counties in the state, getting information about ozone levels and so forth, um, I think is, is very important. So even though we are waiting the fee, I think we're going to get a lot in return, as well as uh, having the boat open to the public at night. Uh, I think it's a really nice uh, coordinating uh, between agencies, and I would strongly urge that we pass this. Thank you for those comments. Any other questions? Seeing no other discussion. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 4.3 will lie over. Items 4.4 .4 through 4.11 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 is resolution number 23 of 17. 18 by Alderperson Wolf providing the um, amendment by and between the city of Sheboygan and 8th and New Jersey LLC. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a, a motion to suspend and pass resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend. Uh, did you want to give an explanation? Uh, yes. The closing date on the property has been moved out to June 15th. Thank you. Uh, is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Chad, did you want to come and uh, explain? So this is the development that will happen on South A Street uh, next to the St. Cyril Church. That development now has a name. It's called the High Point Apartments. Um, under the current development agreement that's in place, uh, the closing on the <coughs> land which they're purchasing from the city was to occur uh, no later than May 31st. 
Um, they're working through the building permit process as we speak. It, the building permit is probably going out later this week. Um, so they have requested that uh, they'd like to get their building permit in place and then they will close on the property shortly thereafter. So there's a tentative scheduled date for June 14th to close on the property. The other piece of the amendment is uh, when we disperse the TIF incentives. So this body has approved 1.7 million uh, previously, the previous council did as the incentive. Earlier this year, we um, uh, allocated another $400,000. That $400,000 is coming from the state trust fund and that process is taking, will take a little bit longer. So we're gonna disperse out the 1.7 million um, on the closing date on June 14th and follow up by the end of July on the $400,000 and the agreement is just being updated to reflect those. Otherwise, they're on task to break ground the week of June uh, 26, and then it's about a year construction time frame. Thank you very much, Chad. <coughs> is there any other discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to items 5. Point, well, 5.2 through 5.11 are all going to be referred to various committees. And then under uh, reports of committees, 6.1 is an RC number 23 of 1718 by law and licensing, to whom was referred RO number 295 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting licensed applications. Recommends a taxi cab driver's license application number 1520 be denied based upon her record of violations related to the license activity or failure to cooperate with the staff investigation and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a support under discussion. Yes, is there a Gloria Rodriguez here tonight? Gloria is not here. Um, the committee had voted to deny her license due to the previously stated reasons, and she did not appear at any of our meetings. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the <laughs> clerk please call the roll for passage? <laughs> Alder person Ballinger, did you have a? No. Okay, okay. Just had to clear that light, sorry. 16 eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 24 of 1718 by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 17 of 1718 by the city clerk submitted license applications and recommends that taxi cab drive driver's license application number 1556 be denied based upon his record of violations related to the licensed activity, his history as a habitual law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Is Thomas Holtz here tonight? Yes, I am. Thomas, if you want to come up to the podium. Thomas's application was recommended to be denied due to the fact of his um, Records of violations regarding license activity. There was um, money theft due to identity theft, as well as regular theft times two. There's concerns because these items have direct influence on the licensing of a taxi cab driver. Um, he, ha he has a history of habitual law offender and his failure to cooperate with the committee. He was given two um, letters of um, certified mails that were signed for, but yet didn't appear at either of our meetings. Um, if you have, need any questions regarding that, we certainly can return to the city attorney. But with that being said, I open the floor to Thomas um, for his explanation. Thomas, please uh, go ahead. My name is Thomas Holtz. i trying to better myself. I am out here looking for a job. I'm not out here doing a crime. I'm out here to do a job and I have a family of support and 
I drove cab in support in Marinette. I drove cab in Manitoba. And I do have license from those states, from those towns that I could present here in, in here, right here from Marinette and from Manitoba. Reason I can't drive in Manitoba because they're not hiring drivers right now. And I've been called from the cab company every other day asking me when am I gonna get my license to drive for them. I mean, I'm not out here to do anything wrong. I'm trying to do a job and support my family and better myself. And if you guys will give me a chance, I would appreciate it because I'm trying to better myself, not to harm anybody. Thank you for those comments. Any follow-up? Um, yes, Thomas, do you live in the city of Sheboygan? No, I live in uh, the city of um, Two Rivers. Two Rivers. And um, we had invited you to a couple meetings. Is there a reason why you didn't come? I did not, um, my neighbor had got my mail and he did not know I lived there, so he sent the letter back. That's what he told me. One of them? And I, yeah, one of them, and I received the other one that I called you on. Would you like to bring this back to committee? Um, is the recommendation that I did not do that, that we denied the license? Okay, moving on in discussion, Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alderperson Holshue, was there a recommendation from the police department on this gentleman? Um, Alderman Boren, he never made it to any of our meetings for there to be a recommendation from the police department, but I'd like to refer to the city attorney as they did the background checks on this particular party. Thank you. There's a new system on how this works, and uh, this is a, recommend, a, a joint recommendation of the police department, city clerk's office, and city attorney's office was made to the uh, law and licensing committee to deny uh, the license. Um, and that was based on uh, his record of violations related to the license activity and his record as a repeat uh, law offender. If you wish, I can go through uh, the uh, violations, but they're fairly lengthy. Um, he did not appear at his hearing on the denial, um, and, uh, but he was, he was provided a uh, letter inviting him to be there. We do have a signed certified letter appearing that on May 12th, um, uh, a signature was of someone living at his home uh, signed for the letter, but he did not appear uh, at the hearing, which was scheduled for May 23rd. Thank you for those comments. Any other questions? Okay, then the motion um, is uh, before us. Would the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes, one no. The motion passes and the license is denied. Moving on to ordinances, uh, general, uh, let's see, ordinances, uh, both 7-1 and 7-2 will lie over. And uh, items 7.3 through 7.5 will be referred to various committees. Under matters laid over, 8.1 <coughs> is RO number 21 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission. Tomb was referred General Ordinance number 1 of 1718 by Alderperson Bitters and Nelson. And RO number 13 of 1718 by the City Clerk for an application from Alliant Energy requesting an amendment to the official zoning map from use district classification urban industrial to use district classification neighborhood residential NR6 and recommends passing the ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. I would move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, that uh, is before us for discussion. See no discussion. Will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. 
Item 8.2 is RO number 22 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 2 of 1718 by Alderperson Bitters and Nelson and RO number 14 of 1718 by the City Clerk for an application from Alliant Energy requesting an amendment to the official zoning map from use district classification urban industrial to use uh, district classification neighborhood residential NR6 recommends passing the ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. Move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Is there a motion <laughs> in support? Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney. <clears throat> 9 point one is a resolution uh, by Alderperson Drawn, uh, authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the purchase of one new fire engine for the City of Sheboygan Fire Department. That'll be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. 9.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2017 and June 30, 2019. Then I'll go to Law and Licensing. 9.3 is also an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2017, June 30, 2018 and June 30, 2019. That'll also be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Next, we have a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in se section 19.85 sub 1 sub e of the Wisconsin stats, where competitive and bargaining reasons uh, require the closed session related to, the, to land um, in the town of Wilson adjacent to I-43 development opportunity on parcel 59281470971 adjacent to County Trunk OK and possible acqui um, acquisition of 606 North uh, 9th Street. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Elder person Bellinger, you rang in before. Did you want to make a comment? Yes, I just, I just had a question. Why are the other matters not on our board docs? They will be tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then the motion to go into closed session is before us. Would the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> 16 eyes. Motion passes. Um, for our um, uh, viewers at home, we're going to be uh, adjourning in closed session. So this will end our broadcast for this evening and we'll take a, uh, a three minute recess. <coughs>